Hey guys, this is Matt and welcome to my TradingView Pine Script Guide for Beginners. In this video series, I'm going to cover topics regarding PineScript, which is a TradingView programming language. It's a very basic programming language, but it can allow you to achieve some pretty powerful stuff. I've been using the scripting language for a couple of years now. I use it to create trading tools that assist in my trading process. Now, PineScript doesn't allow you to automate your trade execution or trade management, unlike a language like MQL. But what it does allow you to do is automate a significant part of your trading process such as analysis, uh, stop loss sizes, trailing stops, setup detection, all kinds of things. And so basically the way I treat PineScript is I use it to be my second pair of eyes on the market for the most part. I either use it to create scripts that send me alerts so I can stay on top of the market. Uh, I use it to create tools to help in my backtesting process. Um, that's a big one. And Overall, I've just found that if you can master the basics of PineScript, you can dramatically increase your edge over the markets. We live in a world where technological prowess and understanding technology and, and computers and programming languages is a very valuable skill to have. Now, when I first started learning how to code, I was probably 16 or 17. I used to make computer games. I'm embarrassed to admit this, but I used to make RuneScape private servers right up until the creator of that game tried to sue me and shut down everything I was working on. But I had a lot of fun with that and I've always had a passion for computer programming. I started out learning Java, which is an intermediate programming language, and I got quite good at it. But over the years, I've lost that skill because I haven't practiced it enough. But thankfully, I've moved over to PineScript now, which is very similar to a lot of programming languages that are out there. But it's also very lightweight. It's very simple, very easy to pick up, very easy to learn. You don't need to be an expert in programming to learn this stuff. And I'm excited to show you what's possible with PineScript in this guide. So without any further ado, let's get into this stuff. I'm going to assume you have zero experience with programming or and specifically PineScript. So if you're a little bit ahead of the beginner stages, you might want to skip this video and go into more advanced topics. But if you're new to this stuff, this is going to be really important to learn. So first of all, you want to take this mouse of yours, come all the way down here and click on the Pine editor. This will open the PineScript editor. And this is where the magic happens. Now this is the default script. Everyone will get this when you open this for the first time. And I'm gonna run you through each line of code here and just tell you what it does so that you have a basic understanding of what you're looking at. So this first line here is just a bit of legal jargon. It associates the Mozilla public license with any code you create. And basically that's just like an open source uh, license. I'll go into detail about your options later down the track in terms of keeping your scripts private and protecting your source code if that's something you, you want to do. But for the most part, if you're anything like me, you'll want to release most of the things you create to the public. And so this, this license here will just protect you from nefarious actors on the internet. That's just a standard trading view precaution. And here you'll get a little copyright symbol and then your trading view username. Uh, these, these two lines here are what is referred to as comments. You see these two forward slashes at the start of this line? What that is saying is it's telling PineScript, it's telling the interpreter or the compiler, uh, which is a fancy word for uh, a computer translator. So all of this English language code needs to be translated into a language that the computer understands. That's all done for you. That's the magic of being a programmer in the modern day is you don't have to know what's going on behind the scenes in order to code. Many years ago, you had to write in what's called assembly code and it was an absolute, you had to be a NASA level intelligence in order to achieve anything meaningful with that language. But today, even a monkey can create. If I can create some of the scripts I've created with this, then you'll be amazed at what you'll be able to achieve uh, because I'm hardly a rocket scientist. I come from a music background. I was a musician before I became a trader and I was a dabbler in programming languages, but now I have a pretty firm grasp on this stuff. And if I can learn it, you guys can too. So I hope that's encouraging to you. Uh, but anyway, these two lines here, it's telling the computer interpreter to ignore these lines. These aren't relevant to the script. This is for human eyes only. Um, you can use these comments to say whatever you want. For the most part, it's used to either explain what your code does or to leave notes for yourself 
or you can comment out certain lines of code that you don't want to delete because they might be valuable later down the line, but maybe you're dealing with some bugs and you want to isolate what's going on. You can just comment out a couple of lines of code using this and the, and the script will just ignore those lines. But for the most part, you'll be using comments to leave yourself notes or leave notes for others. So you could say something like, this script is for teaching beginners how to use PineScript. Simple as that. The interpreter, the compiler will ignore this line, but you know exactly what it means. And that's very valuable when you start creating extremely complex scripts. I have a bunch of scripts that I've written in the past that I have no idea what they do anymore because I didn't comment them heavily enough. So this is something, this is a good habit to get into in the beginning. This third line here, even though it starts with two forward slashes, it's technically not a meaningless comment or it's not, it's not a comment that's ignored by the compiler, but it's also not a part of PineScript code. What this does is it tells the compiler what version of PineScript to target. So the best example I can give is, is the English language. We have old English from many centuries ago, which, you know, Shakespearean type English, which isn't appropriate for today's day and age. And if you were to talk that way, uh, you wouldn't make friends very easily. And so that's an old version of English, of the English language. And today's version is 2.0, English 2.0. And it is colloquial. It's easy to understand. There's a lot of slang, that sort of thing. And so you could think of old English as version one. And if you were to speak in that language, hardly anyone would understand you. But there's times where that's appropriate because maybe you're studying old English or you're trying to write something in that context. Uh, but for the most part, you'd want to use the latest version, obviously. And it's the same with PineScript. So PineScript has version one, two, three, and now it has version four. Each variation of these PineScript versions have different features, different syntax, different uh, syntax is another word for grammar, basically. It's programming jargon for grammar. So commas, brackets, uh, this is syntax in here. You know, you've got the two quotes and you've got brackets. That's referred to as programming syntax. If you change this to version three, there'll be certain features of PineScript that you won't have access to anymore. So for the most part, you can just leave this line. You'll want, you'll, unless you're working on an old script, that's the purpose of this is to allow for backwards compatibility with previous PineScript versions. For the most part, you're going to want to leave this as it is because you're going to want to work with the latest version of PineScript. Obviously, if you want access to all the latest features and bells and whistles, then you're going to want to leave this as version four. Now, moving on, this is where things get a little more interesting, a little more complex. So this first line here dictates what type of script this is going to be. Now, there's two types of scripts that you can create in PineScript. One is an indicator, like uh, any other indicator you would have seen, like RSI, MACD, moving averages, that all falls under indicator. Uh, the other script option is a strategy script. Now, a strategy script is used for backtesting strategies over historical data automatically. I'll show you a quick example of one of the strategy scripts I've created. So here you can see that the script places mock trades. So you can see it went long here at the close of this candle and exited for a profit at the profit target. And now adding up all of these over about 208 trades over the past year or two of data, it had a 53% win rate. So 53% of these trades hit target before they hit their stop loss. So this is quite advanced. We'll go over this stuff much later in the course, but I'm just showing you what this strategy script is for. For the most part, we're going to be working with standard indicators. So to write a standard indicator script, you need to name this study. Now this line here is sort of like a letterhead. You know, on a letter you would have something at the top of the page explaining what the letter is for or who it's intended for. That's what this does for the PineScript compiler. It tells the PineScript compiler that this script you're writing is an indicator script, not a strategy script. And so the two scripts get access to entirely different features. We don't want to be working with any of the mock trade features, so we're just going to leave this as it is for the next few videos. And you can name this whatever you want. I'm going to call this beginner script, just for an example. Describing this next line will be easier if I just click add to chart. You'll see that it now this this line plot is telling the script to draw the closing price to my screen. And it's that simple. From three lines of code, you can delete these if you wanted to, and this will still work. 
And there you go, three lines of code and we're already drawing the beginnings of an indicator. I'll show you one more thing before I wrap this up and then we can move on to the next video where I'll go into much more detail about the code part of this. If you just simply add this line of code in here, this is saying set the variable called overlay to true and true, this is called a Boolean. It's a funny word, you'll get used to it, but it's called a Boolean in programming. And that's just another fancy word. Just like how lawyers have their own jargon, as you would know, the financial industry has its own jargon to make things overly complex so that only other financial experts can understand it. Programming is exactly the same. There's a bunch of jargon terms that only other programmers will understand and Boolean is one of them. All it means is a yes or no, one or zero. It's pretty simple. So this little line here is saying, set the inbuilt variable overlay to one slash yes slash on slash true. Now, if I remove this from my chart, save it, and then click add to chart. Now it will draw the line. It's a bit hard to see, but you can see it draws the line onto the actual chart instead of to its own box. Now, this is obviously really useful for drawing moving averages or like some of my scripts. This script is an overlay script and it draws directly to the chart. You can see it draws a moving average and a bunch of signals and stop loss placements targets. I'm going to show you guys exactly how to build something like this. And this is the beginnings of that. And so that's it for this lesson. I hope you found it interesting. I hope you found it useful and strap in because we're going to get into much more complicated stuff than this in the videos to come. All right. Thanks for watching everyone. Thanks for listening. Good luck with your trading. Good luck with your coding. And I'll speak to you in the next video.